the conference, countries and institutions from all over the world presented and discussed their own strategies. Sonia Rosnik reported the strategies of the United Kingdom's national health system. In these slides of hers, the surface of countries is proportional to the amount of greenhouse gas carbons emitted into the atmosphere. The United States and the Western European countries have the biggest share. Africa and South Asia bear the maximum of burden in terms of climate change cause mortality. Greenhouse gas emission and human health affect each other. Earth heating affects health badly. But keeping up health care and social system also increases the millions of tons of carbon dioxide emitted. The diagram plus the baseline of 2013 and all along the red and orange line, the milestones of reduction of emission until 2050 to target. What moves for the future? The most significant measures to take are eight. In this three-dimension diagram, the two axes in the plane show functions of the health, social and care system and measure expenditure respectively. The vertical axis plots the amount of carbon dioxide emitted to keep any of them up. The production of pharmaceuticals in primary health care, along with the medical instruments and energy for hospitals, have the biggest share. The national health system has listed some actions to take and estimated the amount of carbon saving. For example, the projection shows that one bad day costs 200 pounds and brings about the emission of around 80 kilos of carbon dioxide. Hence, diminishing the number of bad days by improving health hospital care efficiency may be advisable in order to save money and to reduce emissions. In terms of money, the national health system might save as much as £1 billion per year by undertaking a more sustainable approach. The overall vision is to efficiently combine quality of the health system, financial constraints, and to act within the environment boundaries. Organizations of the national health system are already designing and applying for several sustainable development and management plans. Approval processes are ongoing. What do people think about this approach to sustainability? Out of 100, the 92 blue squares say that 92% of citizens think that the national health system should work more sustainably. According to the number of pound symbols, only 33% would accept to pay more for sustainability. Finally, the number of yellow circles proves that only 19% put sustainability as a priority. The road to sustainability is hard to ride and involves all the sectors of the civil society. The Sweden-based European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, ECDC, has set up the E3Geo portal for an expanded capacity of communicable disease epidemiology monitoring. Jens Mensa himself explains. We can see that climate change is a big driver of global environmental change that has impact on vector-borne diseases, but also food and waterborne diseases. What can we do to advance resilience? We asked all EU member states representatives which infectious disease was an uh, issue in their country when it comes to climate change. Lyme borreliosis uh, uh, ranking high in Europe as a concern. West Nile, tick-borne encephalitis, lichenitis, and so on. The next slide is the, uh, the food and waterborne diseases. Obviously, surveillance is the best uh, strategy. And here you can see a survey that we conducted among public health professionals. Do you think the surveillance system in your country is appropriate and adequate when it comes to climate change? You can see that only five European countries here reported that, that their surveillance system was uh, appropriate when it came to climate change. There's a big deficiency that needs to be addressed. And so we ranked all infectious diseases of the health concern according to their impact or their relationship to climate change, below, medium, and high. If you think an infectious disease is strongly linked with climate change, does that mean we need to take public health action? Not necessarily. However, if the impact on society is strong, high morbidity, high mortality, then we might want to take uh, an action where the surveillance system is suboptimal, where we need to improve the system. 
how do we deal with early detection? How do we detect that first case? Traditionally, how we tell, we monitor these health outcomes at a very late stage with traditional surveillance systems. This is what we have built at ECDC. We monitor these environmental precursors of disease by taking advantage of epidemic intelligence or epidemic events that happened worldwide. And we have assembled a huge amount of data that is now available for public health practice. In 2009 until 2011, there were malaria cases that occurred in Greece. So we used data from this E3 geoportal to model the risk of malaria transmission in other parts of Greece. We asked the question, where is the risk the biggest? So you can see these red little balls here that illustrate environmental suitability areas. They use circle fronts from the European Commission to intervene in those areas by spraying, advertising the public health professionals. The second example is one for tick-borne encephalitis. We used an early spring temperature as a risk predictor by developing a model that used elevation, vegetation, and temperature. And this map here illustrates where that risk is. These are the areas where you need to vaccinate the population because the risk is high and the risk in this area is low. Vibrio, which is a waterborne disease, these Vibrio bacteria, they bloom in brackish water when the salt content is low and when the temperature reaches 15 degrees and above. We have now developed a model of, at the E3 geoportal. We monitor sea surface temperature and salinity, and we generate a risk map that looks like this. This one here is data from the very beginning of July, where you can see elevated risk here in the north of the Baltic. The risk increases here um, over the months. On August 14th, there were four cases of Vibrio in the Baltic. The Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, China CDC, has undertaken three projects aiming to assess climate change cause impacts on health and a fourth one to provide response and adaptation. We have conducted the research in different uh, locations in China for heat wave, extreme cold, flood, cyclone, drought, sandstorm, dengue, and other. End of 2016, we may provide the climate sensitive disease list and to assess the vulnerable population who find the most vulnerable uh, subpopulations. The excessive burden of disease caused by climate change and provide the regional discrepancy of these uh, health risks and the problems. So for dengue, we need to uh, identify the dengue hotspots and to establish the modeling for prediction for early warning. And uh, we also need to do the capacity assessment and to inform policy making. Another example is adaptation to heat wave. Developed our own national guidelines and the policy. We developed an early warning system of health and provide a cooling center or equipment in some cities and a national health care system reform for public health service for all. Thank you very much.